Joining us right now is Russ Benham. He is the chairman of the Commodities Futures Trading Commission. And Chairman Benham, thank you for being here. This is the lead story in a lot of places, including on the front page of the Wall Street Journal this morning. This is big news. What, what happened? What have you found in, in the investigation that you're doing? Uh, good morning, Becky. Good to be with you and Joe. And <clears throat> as you pointed out, you know, over several years, we found that finance has been evading U.S. law, offering derivatives to U.S. customers and intentionally uh, evading requirements to register with the CFTC as both a broker, as an exchange for both swaps, futures, and options. So um, this has been a long-going practice. It's a clear, intentional um, method to evade law. And, and because they're offering to U.S. customers, we felt like this was an important case to bring in sending a clear message across to crypto uh, exchanges and cri crypto participants across the world. Binance and others have said that they would welcome regulation that allows for a clear path. But I, I think some of the things that you laid out in, in these charges that you're putting forth uh, are more than just kind of accidentally wandering into um, a violation of the law. This looks like it was pretty orchestrated, at least from what you've put out. Yeah, in the complaint, it's pretty clear that this was, to use your word, orchestrated, and there was an intent to evade U.S. law. And there are communications that are uh, documented in the complaint as well about how to evade, you know, a virtual private network or create a VPN to get around the barriers uh, w with the Internet to have U.S. customers access these markets uh, across the globe. And um, different entities set up overseas um, with really not much in terms of uh, funds coming from uh, non-U.S. entities, uh, U.S. control persons uh, involved. And it, it seems to be a, a pretty classic example of uh, a very clear evasion, a very intentional evasion of U.S. law. And given the volume, given the size of, as you pointed out, Binance um, uh, in terms of crypto markets and crypto volume, um, this seemed to be a pretty clear uh, a case of, of evasion and something that we needed to step in aggressively with. Uh, and do it as quickly as possible, because this was an ongoing fraud going back to 2019, an ongoing violation of the Commodity Exchange Act. So we felt that we needed to move as quickly as possible. A lot of times you would anticipate that a company would say, hey, these were some rogue actors who were doing this. In, in this case, you lay out in the complaint that this went straight to the top, to CZ himself. You have commentary or an exchange from one VIP team member who was trying to court some of these U.S. market players saying, Hi, CZ, I went through a list of affected API clients. It includes a number of large strategic accounts, including, redacted here, a Chicago headquartered trading firm who is currently a top five client and 12 percent of our volume. Zhao's response to that is give them a heads up to ensure they don't connect from a U.S. IP, don't leave anything in writing. They have a non, they have non U.S. entities. Let's also make sure we don't hit the biggest market makers with that email first. Do you have Signal, which is a, a way of privately transacting uh, messages back and forth that you can't track? If that's the case, if this went straight to the top, what would an appropriate punishment be? Well, you know, as, as you know, we're a civil enforcement agency. And I think to your point, uh, and something that has been pretty well known uh, in, in the crypto circles now is that and I've said this in my statement yesterday, not having a headquarters, not having a location is not going to prevent the CFTC from coming after you. Uh, and in this particular case, as I said before, there was a clear evasion. And, and when we looked at the entities, it is a common enterprise, dozens and dozens of entities scattered across the globe uh, with control persons up to Mr. Zhao. And when you have that situation, where you have a control person of a common enterprise, I think there's clear potential liability that we, we saw. And as you pointed out, um, documentation, clear documentation of an intent to evade law with a very clear, direct method of saying, this is what we need to do to evade U.S. law so that we can have access to the market. So um, we, we feel pretty confident in this case, obviously something that um, we are, care about deeply and that we've been uh, on top of for several years in this crypto space. I've been on the show with you uh, talking about a lack of authority for the CFTC in the commodity crypto space. And I think this just demonstrates the need for clear rules, but also authority so that we can avoid situations like this and make sure that we're creating transparent markets so that U.S. customers uh, are, are not subject to fraud or manipulation.